Hey, it's the Political Brown Kid back, and I'm doing another Kevin Samuels um, video review where he has an interaction with a 23-year-old um, um, black female. She um, doesn't have any kids, so that's great. But this video I definitely wanted everyone to check out because it seems like there's a few things going on here. Once again, there's this whole idea to high-value man. I hate that term, but everybody wants one. There's that whole thing. There's also some self-esteem things that's going on in this video. I've kind of edited some things out, but Kevin Samuels did um, make recommendations that she did, you know, seek um, therapy um, at, at some part point in the video. But let's just get into it and check it out. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yes. Thank you. I um, just wanted what? to know, like, how do I, um, I know you said something about attracting a high value man. I just wanted mm -hmm. to know the steps to attracting, like, how do I become a high value woman, like, with my parents and just, like, my status? How long have you been watching my content? For, like, three months now. Mm -hmm. So you know I have to ask questions. My first question is, why do you want to hide them? Um, because I feel like their vibration is much. It's like that's a different type of lifestyle. Like I've never experienced someone with like a lot of financial wealth. Like I never had that type of man. So okay. I kind of want that in a way. Uh, how do you know that? Have you been around? You've never had it. Uh huh. Where have you seen, where have you interacted with these men? i just seen it like, I live in Atlanta, so when I go up to Buckhead, I just see like a lot of rich men that are wealthy. And I'm like, wow, like, I wonder how it feels to actually live that type of lifestyle with someone like, like okay. that. Mm -hmm. Is this, do you want the lifestyle or do you want the man? I kind of want the man because I know like he could provide and I would be okay like because i don't i don't like working I'm just okay but but so in other words you want to buy stuff so just in that first interaction there's, there's a lot going on and it's a recurring theme that you hear I, i'm tired of that term high value but I'm, I'm going with it just for the sake of the video because that's what everybody can understand and relate to but once again, like I said in my other video that I did with a cover on another Kevin Samuels female, the one that Kevin Samuels told to reincarnate, and you guys can check that out. It's women have traded in Disney movies for the internet, for social media. So instead of being the princess in the tower looking for her um, Prince Charming for her frog to kiss, or they don't even really want to kiss a frog. They just want the prince to just already be a prince. They're looking for their instant prince. They've traded that in for social media, telling them they need a high value man. And then black women have traded in, you know, um, so um, here and also too, they, they look at these movies that are selling them the dream of black woman, white man. And now they're fetishizing and desiring white men. And all of this stuff just going to play out the same men are men all over the world. And we're we keep trying to tell you all that. But. The other part about this clip, too, and I'm going to say this, too. It is something going on in Atlanta. Like I told y'all, Atlanta is nothing but Hollywood South. Hollywood has a bunch of broke people in it that all they do is get cosmetic surgery and live a fake lifestyle. And you see the same thing going on in Atlanta. One minute I'm hearing people say Atlanta's this, Atlanta's that. And then the next minute I'm hearing that people are living in U-Hauls and driving U-Haul trucks and they're living in storage units. So... Why is it that, you know, at 23 years of age, and I want to say this, this woman, I appreciate her honesty, this young woman's honesty. I'm not trying to berate her. I'm just using this as a learning tool. I think that, you know, I'm praying that she figures out life and she gets it together. And I think it was brave of her to call in to try to get help. And um, she has a great demeanor. So I'm saying that. I just don't like it when it seems like everyone in Atlanta just sees a particular lifestyle and they just want it. And then you heard her say, I don't want to work. And I'm not talking about this particular female here on this part, because I'm about to say something that's probably going to tick a few people off, but I don't care. It's the truth. I just find it amazing that women get online and they talk about how much better they are than men. And black women always talking about we make more than black men, which is not true. 
But it, it, even if it was true, who cares? But you can go to Bureau of Labor and Statistics and look at the stats. The, all of this stuff is out there on websites. But, you know, everyone talks about how many degrees they have, how how much of a boss they are, and they're doing better than men, and we're so dusty, and this, this, that, and the third. But yet, none of the women want to work. Whether they're white, black, Asian, they just don't want to work. But yet, you got all of these degrees, and you claim that you're so much better than us. And this woman is, she's not the only woman to say it. Like I told you, I was talking to a lawyer. She wants to quit and live a soft life and expect someone to take care of her. So it's like, well, why'd you go to law school? I don't know. Law school, I trust me, I've had friends that went to law school and they have come out with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So, but once again, you're talking about um, people, or, or at least her, she's stating that she wants a high value man so that she doesn't have to work. But yet she's later on, she's going to tell you she's going back to school to do this, this, that, and the third. And so these are the head scratches, but I'll talk about that later. But, you know, they don't want to work. And then also, listen, once again, too, women just want men's resources. I said that about the other women, woman, the one Kevin Samuels told to reincarnate. She came in the video and, you know, and basically said she wants a high value man. If he don't have money, he's not doing she she don't need him and here's this woman basically saying the same thing she's basically like i want a rich man i just feel as though you know that'll make my life better and kevin sims just keeps asking him, well why not just why you need a rich man and she's talking about the vibration men uh, it, basically you want the lifestyle and kevin samuels calls her out on it and he's right but let's just continue. Um, but it's just unfortunate that women just see men as resources and not as like being true companions that, you know, you just want to spend your life with someone and, you know, someone to have your back, someone that you can come home to and tell how your day was. Something happens exciting in your life. That would be the first person you want to tell about. They just want us. They want our resources and then they want us to basically kick the bucket and cross over, go into the light and so they can get all of our stuff and sell it and, you know, hang out with their girlfriends. That's what they want. But let's continue. I feel like, honestly, black men just don't like me. I don't know what it is. So she says that she don't think that black men like her. Um, and Kevin Samuels, I, I'm, once again, I've edited this video because I, for time purposes, because y'all know I, I try to, I can talk and I'm trying to be more concise but it's, it's a lot to digest and to get my point across and maybe i need to learn how to do that in a more concise manner but it's not that black men don't like you but once again i think women get offended when they hear oh you have a cute face for a big girl or you get a cute face but it's true i mean a lot of um women um a lot of big women they have cute faces and it's not that they have cute faces because they're big it's that they they're attractive women but unfortunately they're just on the heavier side and no one and the fellas are like man she lost that weight i definitely be going for her. and i think she knows and understands that this i'm talking about this young woman in the video this young lady in the video she understands that but but maybe she doesn't because she's saying she doesn't think that black men like her but do white men like you? No. Unfortunately, when you're big, no one likes you. Trust me, I am. I'm still considered big, even though I lost a lot of weight. I'm still probably considered, well, not big, but I don't have. I, well, I have my midsection for the most part still, and that just I'm having a battle getting that gone. But when you don't have, when you're not built with a nice physique, and especially. The, the internet has been a blessing and a curse in one sense. I think the internet has kind of made people realize that they need to get their physical look together. And of course, most people are getting their bodies together for the wrong reason. They're not doing it for health purposes. They're doing it so they can look good. But okay, if that's what if that's what's going to get you healthier, fine. But the internet has made everything so visual that, you know, people are just realizing that they have to have their bodies and their physique in check. But the downside to that is we have become hyper visual. But and so I'm saying that in my sense that women don't check for me. When I was skinny, I was pulling a lot of things. But once you once you get big, people don't want a big person. And women will definitely let you know in their bios. I keep saying this over and over again. They'll let you know. 
If you look like you're pregnant, I've already had my babies. I don't need to watch you walk around carrying your... They'll say the meanest stuff to you. So I'm saying that in this to say this is that for this young lady, it's not that black men don't like you because I think that she's an attractive woman. She's average, but she's, I think she's slightly above average, but she's an attractive woman, but it's just, she's attractive if she slims down. Like you have to, you have to throw all that in. Like, man, if she, like the same thing I think that women would say about me, they would say, man, if he really developed his biceps and his triceps and got rid of the stomach and just had to sit back, you know, it's a lot that gets you to that point. And she can definitely get there. She lost a lot of weight. I think she'd be pulling a lot of guys. Regardless of race, she just be pulling guys. But, you know, she has to get to that point. But Kevin Samuels did correct her, but I did edit that out. But I just had to put that in there. But what is one of the first things I say men want from a woman from a, from a physical standpoint? Want, like, the physical, like, beauty, basically. For that. Cause you say it because I don't really it's say it. feminine friendly mm-hmm. cooperative okay. so automatically you're 200 and some odd pounds right that exes you out of the game right there mm-hmm. so what's okay. the most what's the most you've ever weighed uh, the most i've ever weighed was 240. okay So just in her giving her weight stats, I'm, I'm going to say this. America, period, has a weight problem. America, regardless of ethnicity, Americans have a weight problem. Um, it's more prevalent in certain, um, you know, ethnicities than others, but we all do, especially as you get older. As you get older, like I say, I'm in my 40s. You're going to have weight issues. It's going to be harder to get that. You're not going to have that. It's going to be harder to get to that slim physique. And it's not impossible, but you just have to work harder at it. Um, For her, what I'm going to say is this. It's unfortunate that, you know, a, a lot of women just get to that position where they let themselves get in a bad shape, in a bad, you know, physique wise, but they want us to accept that. And for this woman, as Kevin Sammons told her later in the video, I don't know if I edited it out or not, but he's like, you're 23 years of age. And so I'm, so this is my um, observation. When you're 23, your metabolism should be good, you know? Um, but, you know, there could be other genetic things going on with her health thing. I don't know. But, um, you know, 23 and the fact that she didn't have any, she doesn't have any kids, it could just be just a poor lifestyle. And it's still, it's possible to correct it. She's only 23. So she, at least during the time that this video was made, so hopefully she's made strides. But it's just unfortunate that we let ourselves go and then we wonder why people don't want us. But at the same time, we'll say we want to, we want something just like in the other video. We know the physical shape that we're in, but we want better. It's just similar to Lizzo being the size that she is, but she doesn't want to date a big guy. She only wants to date men that are in shape. And it's kind of, it's very hypocritical thing to do. And I'm not trying to say that this woman's a hypocrite, but when you're striving to get a high value man, because she goes through Buckhead, that's what she said, and she sees this nice stuff and she wants to live this Disney princess lifestyle, um, then you should already know that one of the first things you need to do is be in shape. And so hopefully she gets there, but we have a crisis in, and it's not just with women, it's with men too. Cause that's why you hear a lot of the women. That's why you hear a lot of black women say that they like the pookies and the jail dudes because those jail dudes are in shape. And so everybody wants something good to look at. I keep saying this. I keep saying it over and over again that the middle class blacks do not like each other because they're the ones that have the professional jobs and they're sitting down all day, not doing anything. But let's continue. Um, but my, why don't you want to work? I don't know, because I want to learn more ways to get, like, money without standing on my feet. I don't know. It's just something I don't like doing. 
but I still do it though because I have to I have to keep my type of lifestyle up so like pay my rent but I just there's something about it I just don't like okay you want children yeah I do how many like three So, man, why, in all honesty, why should somebody, why should you not have to work like everybody else in the world? Because, here's another question. Uh, they're going to delve back into that work conversation because that was also a theme of this video with her as well, in addition to her weight, it's her not wanting to work. But... As you heard, she said that she doesn't want to be standing on her feet. She wants to figure out how to make money or get money without standing on her feet. And I'm going to say this. This is where, because if you didn't all know, or maybe I edited it out, she is a, I think she went to school for a dental hygienist or a dental assistant or something to that effect. So that's what she does. She works in that type of field. Once again, this is where I try to tell a lot of black people, man, um, I try to tell a lot of young black kids, well, I don't tell them, but, you know, it, it, it's my concern is that when you see black people, I keep saying it, they go for the same professions. We're either doing hair, cosmetology, barber, we're doing lashes, aesthetician. I didn't even, I never knew what that word was. I thought that was actually, a, I thought that was in the medical field because it just sounds medical-ish. Um, but aesthetician, we're doing stuff like dental assistant, they'll do nursing, because I think that the black people just, and we're in HR, we're in human resources. Even though human resources, if she wanted to get off her feet, get into a human resources area, but we don't pursue trades that, you know, afford you those lifestyles. You don't see those trades, you don't see people pursuing trades in artificial intelligence, in cybersecurity, in programming, IT programming, um, be, becoming a developer. You don't see those type of individuals. Or even if you're not in, in that operating in that field, just becoming like in the, in the legal field, um, even though that takes a lot of degrees and a lot of money to do um, for the most part. But you don't see them operating in those type of fields. We go for the same particular type of jobs. And so if she wanted to get off her feet, she could have done that. But now she's going to talk about, spoiler alert, she's going to talk about backtracking and going back to school. And that just means more debt. And it, it, it frustrates me when I hear this type of stuff. Um, that's number one. But then also, too, as Kevin Samuels is telling her, he's like, well, why don't you want to work? And it's like everybody wants to live a lifestyle, but they don't want to do anything. So basically, she wants a man. She doesn't want a regular man because she thinks I'm not saying she thinks she's too good for one, but she's striving. She's shooting her shot for the she's shooting for the moon. And, you know, I guess maybe she'll take you know, she'll come back down to Earth if it doesn't work out for her. But she's shooting for the moon, wanting a, hot, wanting a millionaire man, wanting a rich man. She doesn't want to work, but what does she think that rich man is going to want to tell her? Once again, I keep telling y'all, I told y'all in my last video, and I'm not, I wouldn't classify myself, I'm not rich, rich, so I'm not even going to say that, but I do, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm doing pretty well for myself, and I'm telling you, when it comes with a different when you're dealing with people who have stuff going on, they have a different mentality, they have a different mindset, they're very they're very driven because I consider myself to be a very driven person and I'm probably at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to, you know, being in the, you know, the particular net worth club. But like I said before, I've used Michael Jackson as an example. Prince is an example. These are people that are perfectionists and um, people, when you're perfectionist, you demand perfection from particularly your significant other because you view your significant other as an extension of yourself so if you're hard on yourself and like you demand the best product and the best um, performance from yourself in life you're going to demand it from your partner and that transcends trust me it transcends just your profession you demand it when you're home you demand it around your house it's just it's just a part of your personality. So for her to try to strive and get a, a particular type of man that's going to be like that, he's not going to allow for her to just sit around and eat bonbons all day long and sit on the couch because he's going to eventually he may 
It may be nice for a year or maybe two years, but after you've been hitting the same woman for, and when I say hitting, I don't mean physically abusing. I mean, after you've had intimacy with that particular woman for one year, two years, and now you, you know, y'all have fallen into a pattern of just, okay, this is my girl. And, you know, you kind of start taking each other for granted for the most part, because you just, you know, you've been together for so long, you're going to start resenting this person. He's going to be going outside and working, you know, you know, being productive and being the millionaire that he is. And then he's going to come home and see her just being lazy. She don't want to work. She don't want to clean. Because trust me, if you have that attitude in one part of your life, I could see if she's like, I'm a domesticated woman. I, you know, I, I love, you know, taking care of the house, cleaning up, taking care of the kid. If she was that type and just going to have the house clean and do this, this, that, and the third all day long, then yeah, then that man won't resent her. But if he comes home and all she's just been doing is, you know, talking on the phone, gossiping, and all he hears her is just laughing, being loud on the phone with her friends, having a good time, and she just demands to have maids and demands to not have to do anything. She don't want to scrub the toilet, don't want to wash a dish, she don't want to sweep a floor, and this she has so many things that she don't want to do. The only thing she wants to do is just sit at home and be comfortable. He's going, I'm telling you, that man is going to resent her. And it's not going to end. It, it it may end well for, you know, because y'all women, y'all love to get a divorce and, and just take half the stuff, but it won't work out for her. And, and so what Kevin is trying to tell her is that, look, most people, and even with most millionaires next door, they're, it's a dual income household and they're both working and contributing. Look at Michelle Obama and Barack Obama. They were both working. It wasn't until he got into the White House or, or close to it that she fell back. You look at Bill Clinton and Hillary. Hillary worked. I was so amazed with Hillary. I didn't realize in the 70s that she had worked on all of those commissions and how deep she was into, um, you know, how, you know, luck, you know, how, um, fantastic her career was because all I saw was Bill and then after I looked her up I was like man Hillary's just a, a much as beast as he is so you have to have those dual income households so let's just get back to the video on a scale of 1 to 10 fresh face out of the shower no natural hair no makeup no extensions no lashes what would you rank your right. hair you can't use seven. Uh, a one, I guess. One to ten. Yeah. A one, a one is the lowest possible. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a one. Mm, okay. No, like I feel like maybe a one or yeah, maybe not even on the scale, probably off. So, and that's why I've Kevin Samuel, I think that's what sparked Kevin Samuels to recommend therapy for her because I think she has low self-esteem because y'all saw I did a video with the other woman that Kevin Samuels told needs to reincarnate, which I thought was funny. And she rated herself as a six and she doesn't look anywhere as pretty as this girl right here. You know, she, the, the other girl had a big, big tattoo on her chest and she just, her to me, her facial structure just wasn't like this chick's right here. And so for her to say that she's a one, um, and maybe I'm not looking at her full body. Maybe her full body is just totally jacked up, but she's still not a one. Um, but I think that that's what sparked Kevin Samuels to, you know, recommend counseling. But I did appreciate at least her being honest and at least she's not one of these other delusional females that would have rated herself a nine or a 10. But, um, and you can even hear it in Kevin's voice. He just didn't think that, you know, she was a one. He thought she was much higher than that. She's average. And average is good. And, uh, that's what I really want to hammer home is that average is good, ladies. So if you're, you know, I know everybody wants to be top notch and be, you know, the alpha queen or the queen bee or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, a lot of us are just average. So, but this was a quite, you know, I think that I wanted to leave this clip in because it was very telling of where her mental state is or her self-esteem is. But let's continue. And I'm just curious as to why, high value or not, why not just do an average man? You're right. But I'm asking, why not? I don't really know what an average man is. 
So, and the reason why I left this clip in, it, it was relatively short, but I left this clip in for this particular reason, because I want to make this point. Women, because even in my other Kevin Samuels video that I just did where he told the woman to reincarnate once again, because that's the only other one that I've covered with Kevin, I do believe, is that women don't know what an average man is. And I find that to be, I find that to be shocking. It's like they don't know. They they know what a quote unquote high value man, and I hate that term, and I'm gonna use it just for the purpose of this video. But they know what a high value man is, or at least they think they know, or they know what a rich man is. You know, a man with a Bentley, a man that's got money, he's got a million dollars. They know all about that. And then as soon as you ask them what an average man is, they're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, average man is a man that you probably pretty much see every day. And even still, with these women, they're probably even passing over regular millionaires because I keep telling you all about the millionaire next door. Most millionaires do not drive Bentleys. They drive Honda Accords. They drive They drive probably a Toyota Prius if they're going to be in a Toyota. They're probably going to be in a Prius. They drive regular cars. They wear regular clothes. Picture Heathcliff Huxtable, even though Heathcliff, I think, wore some fancy sweaters, but Heathcliff didn't, he didn't wear any gold. He didn't wear any jewelry. He didn't, he just didn't put himself out there like that. He had a nice house and he lived a regular lifestyle. And so did Claire. Claire just dressed normal. Those are normal, that's a normal type of person. If you see the movie Aquila and the Bee, um, Lawrence Fishburne's character, he could possibly be a millionaire. That would be a, a single man, a single black male being a millionaire. He's not going to live in a big fancy house. He's going to drive a regular car. He's going to have a regular house because he's like, it's just me. You know, he's probably not even going to have that much food in his refrigerator because men are practical. We keep it simple. We really do. We're not going to have a huge house that we can't afford. We're just going to be like, it's just me. I'm just living in this joint. And we're just going to live a regular lifestyle and you're going to be outside gardening. You're not going to be at the club partying it up. You're going to be doing regular stuff in life. Millionaires, I'm telling you, they live born, your average millionaire. I'm not talking about your, those IT tech millionaires that, are, you know, have a bunch of money. I'm just talking about your, the guy that just cracked into the million, just cracked seven figures. And trust me, like I told y'all, having a net worth of $1 million is not flossing. It's really not. You're, that's that's poor. If you if you adjust that million dollars for that was cool in the eighties. You have to have probably about a net worth of five million dollars to be considered a cool millionaire, you know, or not a broke millionaire. You know, you're kind of like, oh yeah, you're still at the bottom at a net worth of five million, but you're kind of like, okay, I'm a little comfortable. I can kind of breathe. But I just kind of wanted to just bring that point up. How much social media are you on, know, like TikTok and Instagram? Just Instagram, but I've been reading Instagram for three days and I got back on. Well, I'm just, I mean, this conspicuous consumption stuff is really working a lot in your people's mind. The, the kind of lifestyle you're talking about is, is the people who can afford that legitimately are people in the top 1%. Right. But how do we get in the top like 1% without You have like, to earn the money legally. Yeah. The men who get there, what, what kind of men who are not athletes, entertainers, or musicians, what kind of men earn that three, four hundred thousand dollars a year? Mm. You don't shop at Gucci making seventy thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. You don't shop at Tom Ford or Valentino or any of the stuff that's in Phipps. You have to have. You have to have disposable income to buy a six hundred dollar belt. Yeah. And again, this is some of the things that I keep telling people. Um, millionaires, people have the wrong impression of what a millionaire is. You know, um, no one, no millionaire, no self-respecting millionaire. Let me put it that way. But maybe a millionaire that hit the lottery because that's not a real million. You didn't work to obtain it. You didn't put in the work or have the discipline. You just got lucky. You got lucky with some scratch offs, so you got lucky with some numbers. Those are probably the only millionaire that you're going to see buying 
you know, that type of stuff, Gucci belts, Louis Vuitton outfits and things of that nature. Being like Floyd Mayweather, that's ridiculous. No grown man is going to walk down the street wearing LVs all over his shirt and all over his pants. It looks dumb. I'm just going to be, maybe that's just my, maybe I'm, you know, an outlier or, or, or just different. I don't know. But no self-respecting millionaire is going to pay or, or give Gucci Make him a millionaire. No, nobody's going to do that. We're just not going to. We'll look at it like, why am I going to give this man two hundred something dollars to make him richer? And that's the same thing when I try to tell fellas about buying females, buy playing, you know, playing in that escorting hobby, and or even having an OnlyFans or subscribing to somebody OnlyFans. Why would you pay a woman two hundred fifty dollars for a? Uh, an encounter for 30 minutes or an hour. And I'm digressing a little bit, but why would you subscribe to somebody's OnlyFans and make them richer to do something that you can just do for free? A millionaire is not going to spend his money. He's going to buy. He's going to be like, I'm not going to give Gucci no $400, $5,000 for some pants. I can go get me some regular jeans for or regular slacks for $30 or $60. And that's how millionaires think. As, as Kevin Samuels said, millionaires don't do that type of shopping. And people only, but one thing I will disagree with Kevin Samuels on is this. He said that people making $70,000 don't shop at these places and that place and so forth, so forth. I disagree with him on that because it's always the poor people that do this type of stuff. And, and $70,000 is average, but that's still a struggle lifestyle. When you look at, and particularly in the black community, and I hate when people say that, particularly in the black, but I just said it, but it, but it's true. When you look at the black community, when you go look at these kids that live in like middle class neighborhoods or even lower class neighborhoods, they're the ones wearing two hundred dollar Jordans. They're the ones wearing these um, ridiculous hundred dollar T shirts, two hundred dollar pants, and buying all of this crazy stuff to look a particular way. And their parents do the same thing. Their parents are wearing all of this stuff because everyone wants to look richer than what they are. Those are the ones that have to go to the rented BMW, you know, those little import exotic car lots and buy used BMWs and used Mercedes. Knowing, that, and, and this is what people don't really realize. You may, can, anybody can buy a Mercedes. But can you afford to maintain it? When you have to take that Mercedes to the um, to the car dealership or to the maintenance shop, and they tell you the oil change on it is full five hundred dollars, and then you look at the difference between that and the Honda Accord or Honda Civic, when you can get your oil change for sixty bucks, fifty bucks, it over a lifetime that's a lot of money that you're putting out, and that's just an oil changes. We haven't even talked about tune ups. We haven't talked about you know. Um, other maintenance that comes with the car, other failures that come with the car that needs fixing on a on a European vehicle as opposed to getting a reliable, cheaper vehicle. These are the type of things that millionaires take into consideration. And that's why they're millionaires, because they think these type of things through. And they're not just going to give their money to, to Mercedes Benz. They're not going to do that. And so I'm saying this to say, He's telling her um, mostly the truth, but I disagree with him on. I think it's the poor, pe the the poor people that will buy this type of stuff. You know, they shouldn't, but they do. But then, when you look at white kids that grew up in like wealthier, they're still middle class or even upper middle class. They don't. They wear like the cheapest looking shoes. They'll be in some Vans or some old jeepers or whatever they they just be in regular shoes and they go to school and the kids they don't grow up with, with this stuff or idolizing this type of stuff i'm not trying to say that none of them do it but when you look at the those kids on average their parents don't put them in that type of situations and they don't go to school like that not unless this is beverly hills 90210 i don't know but that but they when you look at the white people on average they don't blow their money like that so let's get back to the video. But man, you got your demo assistant. That's middle income. That's average person. Right. You get an average life. Right. I kind of want to do other things and further with them. I don't know. You want to do what? I kind of want to go back to school and further or get my own business. 
Oh, oh, business and what? I don't know, like, just. Young lady, listen to me what I'm about to tell you. I need you to really pay attention. Okay. There is no such thing as free money. Mm -hmm. Young black women have been told that having a business makes you rich or wealthy or well off. And an average black female business owner ain't rich. The average black woman in this country earns less than $30,000. People don't pay you for nothing. So just because you hear people on Instagram talk about they get $5,000 in two days, when you talk, hear people talk about they have a business, what do they have a business? Some flashes, bundles, <laughs> some sort of real estate. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Yeah. With some sort of multi-level marketing. Yeah. Not nothing that's going to last or leave a mark. It's, it's, it's what people who don't have real skills tell themselves so they don't have to deal with the fact that they don't have real skills. Man, um, he, he's saying everything that I always say. I, 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 I'm not, I don't disagree with him at all. This is exactly what I have been saying in a bunch of my videos. It's the same businesses, Lashes, Aesthetician, Barber. It's the same businesses that we run. And even I totally forgot about the multi-level marketing because I actually know a female that tried to pull me in to this multi-level marketing. I'm like, why are you trying to get me in on this stuff? Invite me to these meetings and all this other stuff. And it's just, it's, it's interesting that these this is what people think that money is fast and like kevin samuels is telling them there's no such thing as free money it's an interesting thing too that she said that she was going back to school to become an entrepreneur i'm gonna tell the story real quick i'm gonna try to be very short i have a friend she is in her 50s and she has a business she actually has a business or had she was starting her, she was starting her business and she was like, yeah, I want to go back to school. And, and mind you, she's struggling, struggling too. And she was like, yeah, I'm going back to school to um, get me a bit, um, get my, get me a bachelor's degree in business. And I'm like, well, why? I'm like, you're 55. She was 55. I'm like, you're 55 years of age. And I, I didn't say it to her. I said it in a polite manner because I know a lot of women can't. Women, this is why women hate Kevin Samuels. And I'm the same way, similar to Kevin, because men aren't going to be nice and sweet and we're not going to say things in a manner that you know women find palatable we're we're a little bit more probably less you know non-empathetic and for non-sympathetic we're going to say it probably it's going to come off as being abrasive you know or, or not caring but we that's just our tone it's just how we are but i said to her, i was just like why would you go back to school at 55 to get a four-year degree? Mind you, she doesn't even have a bachelor's. She doesn't have it. You know, she just has a high school degree. And I'm like, well, why would you, if, you're, if you already had your business before and it failed and then you're starting another one up again, why would you get a degree in business at 55? Why not just go to your community college and just take business courses? You don't necessarily have to be enrolled in a degree program to just take the courses that you need. If you need entrepreneurship 101, just take that course. If you if you need a class in financing or if you need a class in productivity or whatever the course options that they're offering, just take those selected courses and get your knowledge up if you have, feel the need to go to school or, you know, you can, you know, take a certification problem and have entrepreneurship program where you could go to an incubation thing. But people just love to say that they have degrees. And trust me, this is coming from somebody who has degrees. And I can tell you that education is a ripoff. It's a farce. But people just seem to think that, you know, education is going to get them, you know, going back, particularly at an older age. And it is, you know, woman's 23. But I, I think personally, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you don't need college per se. You may need some classes, you know, just like I said, select courses and just take those select courses. That's number one. Or as Kevin Samuels also told her to get a particular skill, 
get a particular skill. And then once you have that particular skill, then go into business with that particular skill. But if you're just opening up an e-commerce business, you don't need college at all. Really, you just need to be frugal with money. And if you need that, that discipline, then you need maybe take or you need some education. Then you then you just probably need to get educated on, you know, what kind of, you know, e-commerce 101 or whatever the case may be, marketing 101, you know, get some marketing courses, you know, some related courses. But you don't need the whole package because they'll have you taking English, history, science, math 101. They'll have you going to take a four year degree just to get to your concentration. And, uh, you know, she's 23, she's young, and I think Kevin has given her some good advice. But he's also right, too. Biz, people think that entrepreneurship is just, it's easy. And I'm not trying to tell people not to try it because you have to try things in life. Nothing beats failure but a try. And so, but entrepreneurship, if, if you think that the, if everybody in the world is an aesthetician, it's probably highly unlikely that you're going to become a millionaire aesthetician. It's just the market is just too saturated. But what I'm trying to say, too, is that when you look at you see all of these businesses in operation, you see a bunch of businesses that really take a lot of time from your day. Look at all of these Chinese restaurants and you see they're owner operated for the most part. It t and, and if they're not, it takes years, if not decades, for the owner to transition to hiring a staff where they can get out of the business and maybe just, you know, kind of pull back a little bit more. You look at all of these different mom and pop businesses, even if you're a franchisee, and I've known people that own franchises, I know them. Franchises take work. And you're not making, and you need multiple franchises in order to be pulling in bank. You need at least 10 or 15 of them. If you just have one franchise, you're not really doing much. You may make $90,000 off of that joint. That may, that's a might. That is if you have a McDonald's or Chick-fil-A. But if you have like a Subway, you're only going to make $30,000 pocket a year. And so you need at least 10 um, um, Subways to to say, okay, I make two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. So what he's telling her is absolutely correct. They're looking for fast money. Everybody's looking for money and a way to make money without having to do work. And there's no such thing. We have our young black women like yourself, who you really should be in the prime of your life, being as fit as you can be, learning how to cooperate with a man, so you can actually start become a wife, uh, build a family, and some stability, and take the long, slow path. But you, you're like most women, you want it quick, you want it fast, you want it easy, mm -hmm. and yet that's lazy. Right. And it shows up on your body. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything that's going to require you to work. Well, then what kind of man is attracted to a lazy woman? Listen, I, I, look, I already told y'all, I've said that. Go rewind this video. Go back to the 10 minute, 15 minute mark. I don't know where I said it, but I just said this. Men are not going to be attracted to a lazy woman. I just said this earlier in the video, and I know y'all heard me. And, you know, I, I think. I hope that people know that because you, you can't put in the bare minimum, but expect to get a high value personal or expect that other person to carry the load. They're going to resent you tremendously. And that was also the other thing that I was saying, too. Uh, um, when you look, there's a difference. And I'm going to do a video on it. I'm not going to spend too much time in here. But you can look because, trust me, I had rental properties. I, I've had, a matter of fact, I still have two rental properties. I had more, but I had rental properties, multiple rental properties. And when you rent, there's a reason why and like the type of properties that I had were for lower pe people that had middle class income, lower middle class. I mean, upper, lower middle class income and just kind of, you know, they're kind of like struggling. They're not poor, poor, because if you're poor, you're section eight on the project. But I could always see the difference in, um, and, and my friend had rental properties too, because they do rentals as well. And and the one thing that I can see when, when you're talking about poor people, they have a poor mindset. And this is going to tie into this video, so give me a chance. 
the number one, when you look at a person that's poor, um, usually, and sometimes being poor is not necessarily, they don't have good jobs. They could just be poor with money. And some people are just poor. They just don't have any skills. They don't have any skills at all. They just have, like I told you, they're a barber, a beautician, they have those basic type jobs. Those individuals, it seems like they have a problem managing money. They don't know how money works. They think they know how money works, but they don't. They, when you talk to them, their life is unorganized. They, you know, they, they, they're, they're not good with keeping a schedule. They're late for meetings. They're late for this. They're late for that. They procrastinate on doing things. If the car, if the oil needs changing, they procrastinate until the car dang it breaks down and stalls on the road for them to change it. They're procrastinators. But on the flip side, when you look at people that are rich and are about something, those are people that are planning on Monday. They're thinking about what they're going to accomplish this week. They're, they're already saying, okay, what am I, when they wake up in the morning, what am I going to accomplish? And this is, these are the things I need to do. I'm checking my task list and I'm checking things off. And this is what I need to accomplish this week and I need to hit this stuff. And, they, they, and they're approaching not just their professional life like that, they approach their personal life like that. And so some people, they'll go to work and this the difference, but once again, between rich people and regular people is a regular person will go to work and bust their tail for the boss. And then as soon as they come home, they don't want to do nothing for their house. You have to work around your house just as hard as you would on your job. If you're putting in 10 hour, 20 hour days on your job and you're giving your boss 100 percent, when you come home, you should be giving your house 100 percent. You should be taking, if something needs fixing, you fix it. You don't wait until it becomes a super huge problem. You attack your problems as they, as they arise. And so what I'm, why I'm saying all that is because here's a young woman. She's 23 years of age. She doesn't really seem like she wants to work. And I guarantee you, she'll go to work. She'll do everything her boss tells her to do in the dental office because she doesn't want to get fired. But then when she gets off the clock, she doesn't say, well, you know what? I need to become healthier because I don't want to get high blood pressure or diabetes or have any of these other ailments, have bad knees, have this, this, that, and the third. So I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to put in a 30 minutes of, you know, weightlifting, or I'm going to go walking and I'm going to get my, you know, I'm going to get my heart rate up to X, Y, Z. They don't do that. They just come home and they assume my day is over and, you know, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go home, get on my phone, talk crap on my phone to my girls and gossip for the remainder of the night. And I'm going to sit down and I'm not going to move. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to be in the same cycle. They don't think about when they're home, like, how can I how can I improve myself? How can I improve myself physically to get my health right and to be looking my best? How do I improve? Like, what new trade can I learn instead of going on the Internet, looking at videos of people talking trash and how to learn how to do the new twerk dances? You should be looking at some videos on how to make money, what new skill like me. I'm, I'm interested in doing X, Y and Z. Maybe let me look at some videos on how to do this and pick up a skill. Those are the type of things that people need to do. And he's absolutely correct. And you can hear it in her voice. She's just like, well, how can I get there? And people just want it instantaneously, like he said. And that's the frustrating part about it, because when you uh, once again, if you attack one part of your life like that, you're going to do everything like that. And the unfortunate part about that I'm seeing women do, and this is just women, period, women you know, they have the luxury, but they also have, it's not really a luxury, but the reason why I call it a luxury, because no one shames women for this. Women can sit around, eat bonbons all day. They can get big. They can wolf down 8,000 calories every day. They can get big. And then they go and say, oh, I'm going to have a tummy tuck and I'm going to get a rib removed. And then I'm going to get a BBL and then I'm going to get some Botox and then I'm going to do this. And they'll spend... 80 and 90,000, they'll spend tens of thousands of dollars when they could have put that tens of thousands of dollars in their pocket. They could have put that tens of thousands of dollars in and put it as a down payment, as a 20% down payment on a property or something and bought them a property or invested in whatever business supplies they need if she's looking to do business. But you're willing to just 
take the easy route and just pay somebody. That, that's it costs money to do that. I'm tell, I, I, man, trust me, I've known it because I was big. I keep telling y'all how big I was. And I realized that as I get smaller and smaller, my health concerns get less and less and my expenses get less and less. You know, not to say I've had health concerns, but it's just like you can see the difference in how improving your health can better you. But too, but this, but like um, Kevin Sims is saying, we have this culture of just instant gratification where, and particularly with women, they're promoting these lifestyles of just getting taken semaglutide. If y'all don't know what semaglutide is, that's the stuff that's in Wegovy. That's the stuff that's in Ozempic. They just think that all they got to do is go get some shots. And like you look at Oprah Winfrey, lazy, lazy. And you can't say that Oprah just don't know. Oprah just, it, and I really shouldn't call her laziness. It's not just laziness. It's also ignorance and it's also discipline. And the reason why I call it ignorance and ignorance, I'm not trying to use that in a negative tone right now and here, but people take that word to be negative. But a lot of times, because I have a buddy, he he used to train me and he'll tell you, man, if you if you exercise and doing all this and then you go and eat a piece of cake or you do this, this, that, and the third, you just negated all the exercising you did for the day. So I don't know what Oprah's deal was, but, you know, obviously she, for the tens of years or 20 years, 30 years, she's been trying to lose weight. She hasn't been, there's been something missing. Either she didn't know how to lose weight, that would be the ignorance. And she didn't know the difference between calories and, you know, calorie deficits and all this other stuff and how to get there. Or maybe she knew about it and she just didn't, she couldn't live up to it. That's the discipline. It's like, I know I shouldn't be eating this bun, this honey bun, but I'm going to eat it anyway. And then, you know, when you fall off the wagon and think that you're going to, you know, do double the work the next day, stuff like that. Or it's just execution. You just sitting around and you just don't want to do it. And, a lot of people think that now all they got to do is go get a shot and or just go get some surgery, go fly to Mexico, wherever they're going to go, or go in somebody's basement and get this stuff done. And, you know, but when you do things that way, it's not self-sustainable because once again, you didn't do the work and you don't know how to get there. You think that you're going to get there and stay there. But if you don't change your habits, you're going to go right back to where you were. Let's continue. I have a quick question as well. So let's just, let's just say if I like, like get surgery or get my body done and look like a high value, right? And I attract type of man, do you think that's going to probably deform my self-esteem? Or like, what do you what do you think? Like, that, what can I do to a woman? If you did, if you got, if you got your body done and did what? Yeah, like if, if like if a woman gets surgery to actually look like these women that you're talking about, like, do you think that'll like change something? Like, I don't know. Nope. First off, that's one of the worst things you could ever do. In the fact that you're so young and even that's in your mind, that's how that's how. Warped our culture is. You're not supposed to want to have somebody cut on you. There are no fast solutions, man. It's called water, vegetables, five days a week in the gym, running, sweating, stretching, weightlifting for the rest of your life. But what do you think the people who go out here in the world, you think people just give folks money just because they show up? You gotta earn that stuff. And that's effectively what so many want to, women want to do. They want to live life at an F or C, or F, C, D, or possibly even a C level, and then that's not how that works. Once again, I just, I just said this. I just said this. So I'm not going to belabor this anymore, but we're in that instant gratification culture. He t he's been t they've been talking for quite some time. This video was quite extensive. I think it was fifty minutes long. As my video is coming up on fifty minutes, probably too, if not longer. And the thing about it is, 
is that she's still talking about, well, do you think that if I get surgery that it'll be better? She's still trying, after everything he's been telling her about hard work, doing this, doing that, she's still trying to take shortcuts. And so, unfortunately, I hope, you know, I don't know how old this video is. I'm not looking at it. Um, I didn't see what, how, you know, when the video was done. But she was 23 at the time, and hopefully she's learned. But Because trust me, you know, when if you're not ready, you're not ready. And she just doesn't seem to be, she doesn't want to accept the fact that he's telling her to do the work. And so she keeps talking about hinting at surgery and this, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, Kevin... I, I, matter of fact, I, I refuse to get that gastric band. People on, you know, I know people on my job, this white guy, he had it done. And, you know, he hit a certain weight and he's not even in great shape. Like he hit us, I think he said he dropped XYZ pounds and now he's leveled off. And that happened because trust me, your body adjusts to everything. Your body is so smart. That's why, you know, like they'll tell you if you diet a certain way, your body will figure out, oh, this person isn't drinking a lot of water. We must be in a drought. So let's hold, let's retain water. Your body figures stuff out. Your body will figure out, oh, this person likes to eat um, every morning around this time, this person eats a bunch of carbs. So your body prepares for things. Your body adjusts. It is it is probably like, a, a, what is that, that Nest thermostat, the, the Google thermostat, the Nest thermostat on steroids. Your body is very intelligent. And, and she's still trying to take the hard, the easy way out as opposed to putting in the work. Like he said, drinking water, exercising. And trust me, I'm basically saying that because I was in her shoes. And it took me, and just just like, you know, addicts, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom. You know, you have to reach your bottom before you get your life together. And then you'll also, you may fall off the wagon several times. But hopefully she it sinks in with her and she comes to the understanding and realize or the realization that I have to put if, if she wants a particular type of man. And even really, I'm going to say this, even if she just wants a middle and average man, you know, because it seems like she has a problem um, with being invisible. It seems like she's like one of the, just like how men are invisible to women. I hear some women say that they're invisible to men and she's invisible to men and it's possibly due to her size because it seems like her demeanor and her attitude seems nice. It seems like she has some self-esteem things that she thinks a little low about herself, but I think that she seems like a very nice person with a very good demeanor. It's just that she she needs to kind of, she needs a life coach in addition to, you know, maybe, and I'm not a person, I don't believe in therapy. Trust me, I've done therapy and I was like, this this is some bull crap. I could have got some friends to tell me this, but, but I'm not going to diminish it for her situation or for her sake. Maybe it would work on her. Maybe I just had the wrong therapist. I don't know, but Kevin did make that recommendation and that's a good place to start, but also another place for her to start is with a life coach because she's still young. She's 23 and it seems like she's trying to figure out life and figure out her life. And so she needs to have somebody help her get on a roadmap to say, this is how you could, what you should do and how you should do it. Somebody, she needs a more in-depth conversation. She needs a mentor and a coach in her life. But I'm just going to leave this video as this. If you have any comments, Put them in the comment section. Also hit the like and subscribe button. Once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. I'm out of here.